I'd like to call this gathering to order. I want to, again, thank you all for uh, being here. We have a few very noteworthy presentations this evening before we convene our regular council meeting. And uh, I believe I'm first up. Okay, as we're going, to talk, we're going to talk about later this evening, January uh, is a big month for some noteworthy anniversaries, and so is 1923, a, a big year uh, in this community. So I'd like to call up to have join me Ms. Colleen Clark, the Minister of Music and the Assistant Superintendent for Sunday School for the Church of God of Prophecy of the Homestead Branch. Welcome. Thank you. Hey. So, next week, or in a couple of weeks in February, um, the Homestead Branch of the Church of God of Prophecy will celebrate and recognize its 100th continuous year of existence in the city of Homestead. And I'd like to share this proclamation and uh, read the whole thing. Sometimes we skip through the yada, yada, yadas, but uh, I think every paragraph is important here tonight. So whereas the Homestead Branch of the Church of God of Prophecy was established in 1923, and for a century, its various ministries have served the poor, the sick, the homeless, and the incarcerated. And the Church of God of Prophecy, through its 90 years of Christmas programs, has not only provided food and gifts to children in need, but promoted activity to raise the self-confidence of their youth and develop their speaking and leadership skills first in the church. And through the history of the Church of God of Prophecy, its members have worked, cooked, and learned to build, not only but also to construct a permanent home for the church. And still, decades later, members still fondly remember the sherbet treats made and sold by Ms. Mill Lily May Clark to help raise church funds for that building. The other dishes such as pigeon peas and rice, potato bread, conch fritters, and conch salad are all evocative of the early behavior roots of the church members. And whereas some notable pastors include Bishop Samuel A. Thompson through his work with inmates and Bishop Eustace Clark who repeatedly distributed fresh fruits and vegetables throughout the neighborhood to all in need regardless of church membership. And whereas the members of the Church of God Prophecy have included teachers, city employees, elected officials, the Ficall Williams Senior family, and the Alexander E. Roll family, and many current members are fourth generation and more in the church. And God continues to bless the Church of God of Prophecy of Homestead with much growth and grace. Now, therefore, I, by virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Homestead, do hereby proclaim the 11th day of February, 2023, of the Church of God of Prophecy Day in Homestead, and urge all the residents of our community and communities across the country to support them on that Saturday and throughout the year. I want to present this proclamation to you, Ms. Clark, on behalf of on behalf of the church, and I know you're joined by numerous members of your church family, and uh, if you'd like to say a few words and invite them to come forward, you're welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for this, and I'm going to invite some of the members that are here um, so we could take a picture. This is an honor, 100 years. To God be the glory. Thank you. Come on up. Thank you for all the community and the community and the church has done for decades. Just one comment? Come on, man. Don't get 
If only the rest of the night were so easy and fun. Thank you. Good evening. Hope everybody is doing well tonight. Um, I want to thank the fact that my family is in attendance. You all look so beautiful. Thank all you for being here. I also want to thank Councilman Larry Roth for giving me the opportunity to present this award. It's typically something that he does. So I really appreciate it. This one is home team and it, it hits pretty deep. So. I also want to thank the entire Homestead Police Department under the leadership of Chief Roll. You guys do an amazing job. Um, Colonel Kennedy, he keeps us, he keeps council, mayor and council updated with all types of updates, good, bad, ugly, doesn't matter. He keeps us updated so that we always know what's going on in the city and that is a very good way of maintaining transparency and I think transparency is necessary when a city is is trying to operate in the right direction. So I'm on vacation during the uh, winter break and I get an email from Colonel Kennedy and it says they're responding to a victim that's on the rooftop of the Homestead, Homestead Station garage and he's thinking about taking his life. So you can just imagine what that person must be going through. So the victim has a friend call Homestead Police and he says please tell the police department I'm getting ready to jump I want to end my life. Mental health is a serious issue. Seventh floor, seventh floor, this gentleman was on the seventh floor and that ledge is only about six inches wide. So any, any sudden movement this gentleman would have been off the roof. So Detective Guerrero is the first one on the scene to this, to, to what's happening up there. And Detective Guerrero approaches the victim, and the victim, uh, he approaches the victim saying, hey, listen, your life is valuable. You are important. You know, please don't do this. Let's have a conversation. And the person, the victim immediately says, hey, listen, you know, thank you for coming up here, but unfortunately, there's nothing that you are going to say that's going to change my mind. The only person that I am willing to talk to is Sergeant Guzman. So it's, it's an honor for me to be here to, you know, do this presentation so that we can recognize my older brother, Sergeant Bert Guzman, um, somebody that I deeply admire, I respect, I love. And I could understand why someone would want to speak to him. Bert Guzman has a heart of gold. He means a lot to this family. So I, they give him a call, and luckily, he's home and he's available. They tell him what's going on. Bert answers the call of duty. Now understand that Bert doesn't have that exact training, but one of the first things that a negotiator is trained to do is try to accommodate the needs of the person that's willing to jump. You're gonna build trust when you establish that. If you give me something, we're, 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 we're making the right steps in the right direction. So given that the request 
was an adequate request. It wasn't something overwhelming. The department decided to go ahead and call Bert, and uh, Sergeant Guzman came to the scene. He comes to the scene. I can't imagine what he's thinking about. <clears throat> but he has a two, two and a half hour conversation with this gentleman. You see uh, what I've been told, the emotions that are going through this gentleman, you can start to see that it's, he starts to calm down, he starts to connect. Bert is building rapport with this guy. He's earning that trust with this gentleman who's about to jump. So Bert had to dig deep. Bert had to dig deep. I don't know where he got it, but I'm assuming God gave it to him that night or that day. Bert is a man of faith. He has made my faith stronger, so I know he dug deep and God gave him the words to help this gentleman come off that ledge. Bert must have shown humility, courage, adversity, all at the same time it had to pour out of him to get this gentleman to come off. So somebody might think, how does Bert have the connection with this person? Why would he be singled out? And the person um, is mentored by one of Bert's close friends. That is why the person asked to speak to Bert. So when things like this happen, I think they should be recognized. I think they should be applauded. It's a heroic act. And not only does Bert do multitude of heroic acts in our lifetime and with our family, this is yet just another one that we get to highlight. I'm extremely proud. He means a lot to this family and this community. Thank you, Bert. Come on up. Bert, did you want to say a few words? Thank you. I'm glad to have been in service. Glad to be there and to serve. Thanks. All right. As we do with all of our officers of the month, he's being uh, given a plaque that he can hang on his office wall or at home. And it reads as follows, presented to Sergeant Engelbert Guzman for being selected for Officer of the Month for December 2022 from Chief Alexander E. Roll, Jr. Congratulations. <laughs> Can we also please have our colleagues come down and take a picture with, with what we call Big Bird. That's what we call him in the family, Big Bird. Good evening, everyone. You know, Sergeant Guzman, he's real, he's real shy. But let me tell you a, li a little bit why I brought him here. Back in the days at, at Homestead Senior, my wife was out there for many, many, many years. She was a, 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 school, a schooler. She was, she was a school uh, career counselor. And uh, we used to go out to the games and watch this, this guy play football as a teenager. So years, years go by, and you know, I become the police chief, and this guy comes in one day at the interview, and he interviewed for an IT job. So you know, immediately I call my wife and I say, hey, you remember Bert, Bert Guzman? She goes, yeah. I go, well, this guy just applied for an IT job. I say, well, you know, well, how is Bert now? She said, he hasn't changed. She say he's the same slick talker. She, 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 she said, he, he's so smart, but you know, she said, his brothers, they're, they're a little different, you know. His brother kind of quiet and sat back and everything. And, but he said, Bert? He said, Bert is still iced to Eskimo. And I, I, I laughed about it because I'm going like, okay, great. But anyway, to move on, years later, after Bert was doing an IT department, uh, 
he mentioned that he wanted to be a police officer. Of course, you know, I'm all about our homestead, girls and boys. That's what I've been doing for 25 years, making sure I take care of the community, hiring people from this community. Bert came to my office and I said, hey, uh, you know, you want to be a police officer? He said, yes, sir. The city found the money and we sent him to the police academy. And this guy came out and became a police officer, one of the best. And then a couple of years ago, took the sergeant test. And I told him, he probably remember it. Remember what I told him? I said, listen, I need leaders. I need a man to show these young guys and girls how to do police work. I need a real man. He said, I got you, chief. I said, I got you, too. Promoting the sergeant. That's who, that's who this guy is, Sergeant Go Go Guzman. <laughs> Can we also have our family come up, please? Come on up, guys. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor, for that heartwarming presentation. And I have to acknowledge Councilman Roth. Normally, this is your baby here acknowledging our police department. And it was such a kind gesture for you to allow Vice Mayor Guzman to experience that with his brother. So that was amazing. Love you guys for that awesome presentation. Good evening, everyone. I am Councilwoman Patricia Faircloth Staggers, and I am so excited to be here tonight because there's nothing that gives me more joy than to celebrate children, empower women, and to recognize our schools. As an educator and a teacher to the core, I am so excited to be honoring Homestead Senior High School tonight. I am homegrown in the city of Homestead, born and raised. I've had the pleasure of attending South Dade Senior High School, 9th and 10th, but I graduated from Homestead Senior High School, where I attended. <laughs> for 11th and 12th grade. So I am a Bronco through and through. I was a recipient of the inaugural Homestead Legacy Alumni Award, super excited about that. And I'm even more excited tonight that our Homestead Senior High School football team made it all the way to the state championship, the Class 3M state championship. That deserves a round of applause. They represented us on the big stage. So this is just a small token of our appreciation to recognize you for highlighting and promoting the city of Homestead. And I would like to have 
Region Superintendent, South Region Office, Mr. Rafael Villalobos, Administrative Director, Dr. Carlos Rios, to join me up front, as well as the transformational leader, the principal, my good friend and colleague, Mr. John Gallardi. Let's give all these gentlemen a round of applause. You are welcome. Congratulations on your appointment as Region Superintendent and Mr. Gallardi. This man has transformed Homestead Senior High School from the inside out. He get my text messages. Who does your fence line? Who maintains your lawn? This school is impeccable and he is elevating teaching and learning, creating and building athletes who are also scholars. So with that, we have some nice hardware for you. We have this as a token of our appreciation from mayor and council to our Homestead Senior High School football team for being state runners up for the Class 3M state championship. Would our football players and coaches please stand? Please stand. I think that deserves an ovation. Congratulations. I was five years old the last time Homestead Senior High School went to the state championship. But we have more for you. So I would like to invite my colleagues to come on down because all of us were so excited to give you some funds to support the football team. And we're going to bring you up here, boys. Don't worry. We're going to bring you up here. On behalf of the City of Homestead, Mayor and Council, we would like to present this check to Homestead Senior High School for $1,450 to support your football program. So before I bring the team up and allow the head coach to, to bring a few words, I would just like to allow Principal John Gallardi to bring a few remarks on behalf of Homestead Singer High. Thank, thank you so much. It's a, it's a real honor to be here. Coach Ronnie Thornton, our head coach, is coming up here. And the All-Day Player of the Year, our quarterback, Josh Townsend, is up here. Our leader, the heart and soul of this team. It, and, and just a brief remark, when we traveled up to Orlando in the state semifinal game, and then we traveled to Fort Lauderdale for the state championship game, we were so incredibly proud to represent this great city uh, and the work ethic that it presents. These are great young men. They are great athletes, but they're great leaders and the future leaders of our community. They're, they're learning great lessons on the field about competitiveness, teammates, support, uh, and values. So we look forward to them as future leaders in our community, and we thank you for your continued support of Homestead Senior High School. Where's our coach? Coach? Ah, come on. You like to bring a few words? Hard to kind of go behind what, what Mr. Gillardi just said, man. Um, I mean, we, we really do appreciate it um, from, you know, where we started uh, when we first got there as, you know, when Mr. Gillardi got there. Um, you know, just kind of being a part of the, the initial uh, wave of coaches and change to that building and things like that. We really, really appreciate all the support um, from inside and out that, that we did receive. And uh, again, man, just, just really excited to have you guys continue support. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. In our neck of the woods where we grow up, we've come from the bottom and we make it to the top. We tend to say we started from the bottom. Now we're here. Congratulations, Homestead Senior High School. If you can please join us. Don't know how we're going to take this picture, but we'll make it happen. Come on, players. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We'll go stand behind you because we're raised so that we can get more in. We'll go back there.
Before you all leave, I just have to share something with you, team. Vice Mayor Guzman and I were invited to attend the, the Crosstown Rivalry game, game and take part in the coin toss. And I won't talk about the drubbing that you gave my alma mater from South Dade that night, but I'll tell you, walked out there and your quarterback was, was at midfield with Vice Mayor and I, and I think I commented to the Vice Mayor at the time, I have never seen such intensity in the face, up close and personal, in a player like I saw that night. It was just really, you could just feel feel it, yeah. it coming from every pore in his, his body. And what a night and what a season. So congratulations again. Thank you all for coming tonight. <laughs> Councilman Roth. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Wow, this, this room tonight is filled with a lot of love, right? Love for our police department, love for our, our officer, uh, Guzman, love for our hometown football team. And now I get to do a presentation to potentially future Homestead High School football <laughs> players that have accomplished something for the first time ever in the city of Homestead. But before I start to talk about that and brag on them, let me invite their coaches up here first. Uh, and this is the Dick Conley uh, Steelers 9U football team coming up here in a minute. But I'll bring up their coaches. Anthony Braggs, if you're here. Robert Collins. James Ellenberg. Jeremy Sands. Duante Davis. Michael Goodman. Vernon Womack. Paul Atkins. And our very own Officer Robbie Tate. These uh, inspiring young athletes of the Dick Connolly Steelers 9U football team, they are the first team in Harris Field Dick Connolly history to win the championship. The first time ever for the 9U U football team. Many teams have made it to the finals, but the 9U is the only team to bring victory back to where? Homestead. Before I present this to any of the coaches, have anything they'd like to say? All right, I'm um, Coach Parnell. I'm the commissioner over at Dick Conley. Last year was my first year taking over the commissioner duties, and I had my 12 year team up here. We made it to the championship, but we lost. And this year, as a 13 u we made it to the championship, and we lost. But this team right here, the 9 u it was the first one to bring home the championship. So from now on, I told them everybody looks up to them and trying to accomplish what they accomplished. So they want to be sitting over there with y'all. Like I said, that's a big thing being in high school. And y'all got to understand, y'all players out there, that these kids, little kids, look up to y'all. And y'all got to lead by example, if you know what I'm saying. Thank you, Coach. And I'm going to kind of break script here, uh, and I'm going to bring up each of the kids individually. We're going to hand a plaque to each one of them because they've deserved this award. They worked hard for it, and they're champions. Uh, let's bring them up as they come in. Paul Atkins, please come up. Not here tonight? Okay, we'll put him aside. Kamodi Graham. Kimon Brown. Keep, keep coming up, guys. Amari Remy. Marcus Owen. Talib Nesmith. Nico Robinson, Andre Henfield. Henry's not here. Okay, we'll just keep moving. Uh, Javendras Donaldson. He's not here. Okay. Uh, Jeremiah Washington, Omar Arroyo, Terrence Goodman, Darius Hines, Matthew Molina, Jeremy Ellenberg, O'Donohue Mayor. Donovan Baker, Wyatt Moling. That name sounds familiar. Moling. Is that Robert Moling's son? Is that one of your grandbabies? Congratulations. Uh, Mike Brady, Dazil 
Convergere, Ladarius McNeil, Lawrence Sneed, Lydia Batiza, Ryan Tate, Jeremy Brickle, Jordan Artola, Frederick Ferguson, and last but definitely not least, Franklin Jr. Henley. Let's give them a big round of applause. And I've got one more presentation. We've got the certificate of achievement. And let's read it through here. It's pretty simple. This, this cert uh, certificate is awarded to Dick Conley Steelers 9U football team in recognition to your hard work, dedication, and the 2022 Miami Extreme Youth Football Championship win, being the first team in Dick Conley history to bring the championship home. Thank you guys for that. Presented this 25th day of January 2023. Congratulations, guys. And thank you for representing our city and bringing home a championship. And I want to just give a shout out to all the parents that are here tonight, high school players, parents, the 9U parents. Thank you for supporting your children and giving them all the opportunity to compete, giving them what they need at home to become productive citizens, and that they can compete at levels like this. We're proud of them, as well as you're proud of them. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. Well, again, congratulations and everyone who was here tonight that we recognized and all of the parents and coaches, administrators, each and every one of you. This concludes the council presentation ceremony and we will convene the regular council meeting at 6 o'clock in about uh, 20 minutes or so. So thank you all for being here and uh, I know we'll see a lot of you. What's that? Yeah. Thank you all.